Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good vibes, good energy, good people. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support my brand, Inspired by Dreams, just a little new, something new for you guys, just to add to your closet, something original. And I try to bring you designs every few months just to keep you guys in your closet original some new pieces you guys could um just take a liking so if you want to support the brand it's inspired by dreams shop that's that little sign down below okay today's episode what i always try to do is try to find some similarities within all of our cultures what i did find in everybody's culture some similarities that we do have a lot of people in their early 20s and even people in their at an older age experience this identity crisis what and as crazy as it might sound or it might sound like that's not me a lot of people deal with it so i took an air to it and i kind of understood what a lot of people were saying but you have to understand that an identity crisis is kind of like it's dealing with history and it's dealing with your present and once you know your history you always know who you are now and it kind of doesn't make you who you are but it's just good to know on where you came from and uh, your your lineage and how you know your past and how that was an impact to society because people always keep it on and on that's how stories get passed on so we're looking over at people's different identity crisis and we're just hoping that everybody get over all of this stuff we got to get back together all right let's get it Mickey made it. Mickey made what you made, Mickey. Forget about the way it used to be. This is not a damn democracy. We are in a state of emergency, and my word is law. Okay, so I'm black and Mexican, right? And this isn't gonna be a video of like, I don't know where I belong, I'm half and half, it's very clear to me. I've just always assumed that when people look at me, they see a black woman or they see a black woman who's mixed and they don't know with what. So it's always really weird to me when people can tell off bat that I'm Latino because I just never saw those features. Um, and it's always like a little señora who needs help, who's like, perdón, hablas español. I'm like, yeah, I do. How the, how the fuck did you know that though? Until I looked at my passport photo. So this is my most recent passport photo. You guys, when I tell you that that is the most Latino I've ever looked beyond today, I, I think what's happening is as I'm getting older, I'm turning into more of a señora and I'm starting to look more Latino. And I swear to God, I used to look more black. So now I'm like, does this happen to every mixed person? Like, did you used to look like one and now you look like the other? Because look, look. Yes, that is a mixed girl, but that is a black girl. And what the fuck happened to her? Cause who is this? Calling all of Generation Z, I need y'all to let me know if I'm onto something or not. So as we all know, we were born in one of the biggest times of technological advancement and fast paced media consumption like ever. And I know you think I'm just gonna talk about, oh, how is it affecting our brains? But I, I kind of have a theory. So as we know, we are like the most disconnected, connected generation of all time. Like we are so connected to each other online, but it's all superficial fake bullshit. But I first want to think about our parents' generation, Generation X. They had a very distinct memory and collective experience of the trends of the time. You know, rock and roll, your dad saying, oh, I remember this song, I dance with my prom date, you know, whatever. Didn't matter if you were eight years old or 16 years old growing up in the 80s, the collective experience was still the same. You remember rock and roll. And thus, they were able to develop that collective experience that everyone in Generation X had. Now, for Generation Z, it's not like that because the trends are always changing. And at first, this really wasn't a big deal because at least we could see each other in person, but then the pandemic hit. The only way to connect to anybody was to have a collective experience on TikTok. Think about this, okay? March of 2020 versus May of 2020. Think about different trends. Constantly changing trends. If you were a preteen or teenager at the time, these trends are the things that you look back on to actually form your sense of identity. And because they were changing so much, you constantly were forming your identity around these trends. And then what do you do when one of your friends goes, oh my God, I'm not alt anymore, that's so cringe. Oh my God, I'm not that anymore, I'm, that's so cringe. Oh my God, I don't participate in that anymore because that's, that's fucking cringe. And so you'll change again and again and again in the name of self-improvement when the only thing you're improving is your ability to tear yourself down and build yourself back up. 
up. You're not improving anything. The only thing collective about our experience is we are collectively going through an identity crisis as a generation every single month. No wonder why people are on here saying, oh, you have borderline, oh, you have ADHD, oh, you have this, because we are all mentally ill as a fucking generation. When our fear of missing out is exactly what makes us so profitable as a generation. Oh, you want to self-improve? Buy this. Oh, you want to you wanna do that? Buy this, you know? I don't know. Something to think about, all right? You're okay. Uh, we're in this together. Let me know what you think. But that's not true. African Americans are loud, rude, obnoxious, and just all together fat and ugly. If you ask me, my 16-year-old daughter has a very out-of-control identity what? crisis. She truly believes she's white. When Treasure was five years old, I've noticed Treasure was having issues with her race. She wouldn't play with the black children. Treasure would mangle or destroy her black dolls. She would cut their heads off, pull off their arms. She would pretend that they were the white doll slaves. What? Well, my mom bought me beautiful white dolls. And we couldn't afford to stay in our beautiful home. We moved from a mostly white affluent neighborhood to the city, which was mostly African-American. From the suburbs to the real quick that's why it's so important that kids could you know when they're looking up to on tv or on social media they can see somebody they can identify themselves with and that can inspire them to you know be great as well as the other things that come along the way of their education but wow this is crazy good <laughs> I was not anything like other black people they were all hood rats and they were all ghetto they all act like monkey <laughs> So aestheticless black girls, where are you? Because I feel like I'm the only one. I don't feel like the skinny indie septum piercing baddie, you know, aesthetic. On the other hand, I do not fit the ATL baddie high piece, you know, edges laid, perfect wig, HD lace aesthetic either. On top of that, I do not fit the beautiful all aesthetic with like the colorful hair, the colorful outfits, the out there shoes that I love. Like I'm literally obsessed with all these aesthetics. On top of that, I am not the luxury black girl who's gonna drop over a thousand dollars every single day and live a lavish lifestyle. So I'm having an identity crisis because I feel like that's all my feed shows me. I, that's literally it. And I love it so much, but I feel like I don't belong anywhere. I don't fit into a certain aesthetic. And I'm not trying to give me pick me energy. I just feel so lost in direction because I feel like I don't fit in anywhere. And don't even get me started on my African heritage and how I feel so Americanized. And, and that's a whole other thing. But I always find myself once a month seeping into this like identity crisis. So if anybody has any words of wisdom to help me out because I'm losing my marbles right now. So I just saw this girl's video. And she basically said, and she's a black girl, and she said that she hates being black. White girls are prettier. She wishes she was white. Now, I wish I could sit here and tell you that like a lot of girls that are black don't feel like that. But probably all of them feel like that. Okay, not all. Most of them feel like that at least once in their life. Because, like, let's be honest, like, there's, there's differences, like, and then, like, certain differences that you have, <clears throat> people make fun of them about it. Funny thing is, as you get older, you'll realize that a lot of white women, especially the Instagram baddies, are modifying their bodies so they can look like a particular demographic of women. And you know what that demographic is, black women because who has bigger, more pronounced lips? Who has more curvaceous bodies? You know. I just wish that this, like I could like reach the screen and give this girl a hug and be like, girl, you don't understand how many people of this race that you think look so much better than you wanna be you. Like literally, there's girls on this app that are white, that tan their skin so dark. I think, <clears throat> I think 
it's hard. It is hard to learn to like love the skin that you're in. Especially when you feel that particular way. No hate to you, all love. But I really want you to start looking at yourself in the mirror and appreciating the beauty that you have. And know that like someone thinks you're beautiful, flaws and all. And the color of your skin is not a flaw. You're beautiful. How your hair is, is not a flaw. It's beautiful. So please, please do not sit there and wish you were a completely different race than what God made you. Because you're beautiful. <laughs> if you're currently having an identity crisis, this is why you're in the best place you can be. So when you're having an identity crisis, it can feel very confusing and very like out of control because essentially what is happening is what I like to call the dark night of the soul. And this happens when there's certain truths that are presented to you um, in your life, in the physical world that start pointing a flashlight to the parts of yourself that are not aligned with who you actually are. The reason I say this is the best place to be at is because you have now a clear foundation and a clean slate to start building a version of you that is your highest self. And the way to get there is the way I would do it is I would envision my the highest version of myself and what does this person, what does she look like? What does she talk about? What does she believe in? What does she do in her life? What does she stand for and stand behind? How does she act? And I trace the steps back on understanding how do I get there and how do I take the steps in order to remove the blockages that I have within myself now that prevent me from getting to that version of myself. And that's how you start building that version of you up and you essentially cultivate a sense of your own identity. Guys, we definitely need a name for what we're currently going through. All the ladies in their late 20s, if you're 28, if you're 27, 28, 29, we need a word, a name for what we're currently going through because I don't know. Like, it, the, I'm not the only one going through this. Like, I've been talking to my friends and we all have the same feelings about life. Like, we're all currently experiencing the same things. Like, like our lives are so different but we have so much in common, like in terms of how we feel. Um, and I know with the ladies in their forties and upwards, um, they're currently experiencing midlife crisis. So this is not a midlife crisis. I don't know what this is called, but I feel like if we know what it is that we're going through, we'll be better equipped, we'll equip ourselves, we'll read on it, we'll know how to respond, we'll know how to maneuver this phase of our life because it's just a lot. It's like, I don't know how to explain this like as someone in their late 20s you wake up the next day you're like fuck everything fuck my career fuck my dreams fuck my aspirations i wish someone would just come and marry me i want to be someone's wife <laughs> i want to be a housewife i want to pop kids i want to you know and then the next day you want to take over the world you want to travel you want to pursue your career you want to change careers like whatever you're doing right now you feel like actually i want to study further or i want to study something totally different altogether actually i want to move abroad actually i'm done dating actually i want to settle down like what the hell is going on because <laughs> something is definitely going on like I feel like this thing there is no psychological stability in this era of your life like 27 28 29 like you are just con constantly changing and it's it's not sustainable and and this thing will just make you outgrow so many things so many people you just become a totally different person like with me I know it's making me hate social media so much, especially Instagram. Like, I despise it. I just feel like people are not living authentic lives there. And it's just, it's an irk for me right now. Like, someone who's obsessing over Instagram, I can't stand it. And I used to be that person. Like, I used to be such an IG person. But 
I don't know, man. So many changes happening all at once, and it's it's it, yo, like it's too much to take in and break and break it down for the next person. Like the mood swings. Like you wanna be indoors when you when you indoors. You wanna be outdoors when you're outdoors. Like it's it's a lot. I don't know what this phase is, but we need to figure out what happens to you when you reach your late twenties. A lot of actors end up with um, personality identity crisis and conflicts because you have so many characters you're playing and if you really commit to the characters you become like a piece of clothing and your body becomes what they put on and the character has a tendency of wanting to own you you said that i'm the first person that you've come across that doesn't identify as mexican at least from my personal experience yes I'm Mexican. As far as your race. Not there you go. Okay, so technically, because I, w I was born in Mexico, I am Mexican. Of course. There's nothing I could do about that to take it away. Because nationality is nationality. However, when it comes to race, Mexican is not a race. But mm -hmm. the misconception has been la raza mexicana, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not a real thing. Because in the 1800s, the uh, Mexican government was prohibiting indigenous tribes from identifying with their indigenous tribe. For example, you know, Zapotec, Mixtec, Purepecha, Tarahumara, not only prohibit them from identifying as tribe, but also kind of forcing them to just take on the blanket identity of Mexican. So ever since the 1800s, we've been identifying as Mexican under the impression that that is our race. But the initial reason behind it is obviously because it's a systemic effort to ethnically erase us and or detach us from our real tribal identity, which is why ever since then we've been identifying as Mexican. So because we've been identifying as just Mexican, por eso mismo is why we are under the impression that Mexican is a race because we haven't had any other option, you know? So a lot of people like you, I assume you were born in the US, a lot of people like you who identify as Mexican because maybe your parents are from Mexico or you're grandparents either way you are under the impression that you you descend from the race of mexican people of course that's how we all have been identifying as and that's why i'm very careful in approaching this subject because i am literally ripping our own people from what we've developed pride around who the hell am i to detach somebody from their pride from everything they've come to love like any mexican that is a proud mexican is very proud of it it's very like orgullo mexicano and things of that nature you know i was one of those people too the only difference is that i've been on a journey to find the truth and while looking for the truth is doing so objectively meaning detaching my emotional biases and also what i've developed a pride in so i have had to be very objective when you're searching for the truth you gotta be objective because if you're biased you can't you know I was born into a Catholic household, raised by Catholics as a Mexican. I'm literally the goddamn blueprint of El Mexicano Cara de Nopal con la Virgen de Guadalupe, all that good stuff, you know? But in order for me to look for the truth, I had to disregard everything I've ever fell in love with, everything I've developed pride around, and be truly objective when I'm searching for the truth. So I'm gonna be honest with you. When I realized that being Mexican was literally just a systemic effort, it broke my heart because I know how many millions of us, millions and millions of us have identified as Mexican. It is, it's not our fault. It's not our fault, dude. I mean, how could it be our fault? We were born into this. So if it was difficult for me to detach myself from this, I could only imagine somebody who's not as objective as I am. Okay, one thing I could say is shouts out to all the cultures out there. Shouts out to the Mexicans. They're always, you know, what a great explanation. And a great way to just break it down to somebody just so they can see the differences and under, a little have a better understanding of what they're saying. And shouts out to all the cultures out there. If you love your culture and you should always bring the best of what your culture has to offer to whatever the conversation may be instead of bringing the differences. So just bringing these similarities, it made me see and made me think that, you know, we all have our little differences and some things that be misconstrued. But at the end of the day, we're all people. We got to love each other. And you guys let me know in the comments if you're going through a, you know, identity crisis and or maybe if you went through it and you got through it. 
let me know down below in your comments love you guys and you know we'll get back at this conversation on my morning shows mondays wednesdays and fridays at 9 a.m okay till next time it's your boy mickey fenty aka mickey made it if you're new to this channel you know what to do to this channel subscribe